he would come and go. My mother was the de devout. My, her, her brother's the priest. Okay. So uh, my, her side of the family, my grandmother was on that side much more religious than my father's side of the family. Um, they lived close by in the, in the city, so it was, you know, a constant uh, uh, influx of uh, uh, great uh, aunts and uncles coming over that were uh, uh, religious, you know. So I had a lot of my memories, early memories are, you know, going to church and going, you know, dealing with the family members and whatnot. They have mandatory uh, education that you go through, you know, they, first you go through uh, uh, your first communion, and then in your high school years, you go up to confirmation, uh, which is basically to confirm your faith. Um, I don't know what you, much what you're confirming. I don't remember anybody, anybody asking me any questions. It was just more educating you, and then you, next thing you know, you're doing the ritual, and, and that's pretty much it. So I, I don't remember any choice, no matter. It was just kind of that's what you do. You know, you do it so you don't, uh, you know, you don't want to make mom and dad look foolish. The, the creeds that they they have um, never resonated with me. They never um, meant much. In fact, I remember reciting them and, and feeling quite awkward, uh, saying them like really struggling to memorize those creeds uh, that they would put out, like the you know Apostles' Creed or the Nicene Creed. They were very labor intensive to just to memorize them. And they shouldn't have been. They weren't that long compared to what I'm memorizing now. But uh, uh, you know. There, I think there was some, I had some, definitely had some discord uh, between uh, those creeds. Um, but, uh, you know, I think when it comes to uh, confirm, com confirming my faith, it was, uh, it was purely a ritual. I was a daydreamer, and uh, I was, I can remember uh, just be being in a constant daydream mode uh, uh, and not not really worrying about these things. It wasn't, I don't want to uh, give it the wrong impression. I wasn't uh, studying for sure. This That would come later. Mm -hmm. um, and I would have to make many mistakes before I was looking for any spiritual truths in my life. Um, but back back then, it was more of an issue of pride uh, to have an uh, uncle that was a priest and, quite frankly, a get out of free card, get out of jail free card. <laughs> You know, having a religious member of the family that was a, a priest and religious made me feel like, oh, it's kind of like a free pass. A free? Free pass. You know, like, uh, you know, the consequences will be lighter for the choices that I made because I have uh, this person uh, that's my uncle that's in my family that's a religious leader. Yeah. So, you know, having, it was a you know, complete mistake, of course, but that's, that was the thinking at the time. It was nothing completely uh, uh, thought through, you know. The only thing I would say that there was a lot of things about uh, about going to Mass or, or all these different doctrines that felt a little bit unnatural to me. Um, and when, I, uh, when I read the Quran for the first time, uh, it was literally a revelation. You know, it was very powerful. I couldn't put it down. I never read a book so fast. Maybe. Yeah, and uh, you know, and ever since that that day, the first I remember the first couple months were hard because you have a lot of things that are very convenient in your life that you don't want to give up. Sure. And uh, so there was a real deconstruction of life for a, a short time. You know. It, it didn't matter how much I didn't want it to happen. <clears throat> it happened no matter what. Did Even if I was going to put it down, I, I couldn't ignore it anymore. Sure. I sure. felt notified. I felt informed. Because yeah, I remember having conversations with my mother, and she'd be like, OK, it's time to go to church. I'd be like, you know, in my angry way, I'd be like, well, I don't want to go. I can pray here. <laughs> Why can't I pray in my room? Why do I got to go there? You know, it's a very, you know, I don't know if you've ever been to a Catholic mass, but, uh, you know, there's, it's very uniformed and very, uh, you know, very formal and, you know, uh, you know, just kneel here, sit here, put money in here. And, uh, you know, and you do this, and if you don't do it, then you're going to be in a lot of trouble. Mm. You know, but no, no further explanation. I always believed in God. That was never an issue. Um, it was the way that I was being told how to believe. It, it was never, you know, I, I never... Uh, I had any thought ever of, of an absentee 
uh, God. I always knew that, you know, somebody's watching and, you know, at certain uh, times in my life. Um, and you know when you're do, doing something that's wrong or, or, or good, you know. So uh, th th those things were never confused in my mind. Th that was relatively clear. I, I didn't see a lot of religious diversity. Um, so, uh, uh, yeah, I, you know, I, I, I had a couple friends maybe that went to a church, to my church. Um, but I, I don't uh, recall uh, having a, it wasn't a, a, a requirement for being friends with them or anything like that. And the school that I went to was not a, a religious school. So it was secular, normal uh, United States school, and, and religion had no part of it. I would definitely say I went, I went astray out of the uh, Catholic uh, requirements to be a good Catholic. <laughs> when it came to partying or drinking or, you know, any, any of it, it's not, I have no, no shame about that. It was a, a different time, sure. you know, different time. And, uh, you know, uh, yeah, you know, high school, college is college. High school is high school and then go to college. And But I did have a, I did have a, I had a spiritual crisis in college. I, um, you know, I, I felt a lot of anger there, and I was, I felt suffocated. You know, left school after two years. You know, moved away, moved to, uh, moved to out west, Colorado. Lived in a, uh, a dude ranch. In a what? <laughs> Horse ranch. Horse ranch. I was. I lived in the mountains in a cabin, okay. for a good six months a year, and uh, I had, to, I just had to get out. I had to, I felt everything had been orchestrated and I, had, I hadn't put my voice forth, I hadn't made any choices. I had just done what I was supposed to do the, so whole, th the whole time, to high school, to college, and then, I, and then when I realized that nobody was really paying attention and nobody really cared, I just decided to leave and go do something I wanted to do. You know, I use the term of spiritual suffocation. Mm. You know, you have this inside of you that, that uh, that wants to be exercised, and, and you, you can't exercise it in that life. There's too many restrictions, and, and you have to break away or run away, or sometimes you do it in a book, sometimes you do it physically, uh, sometimes you can do it, uh, you know, in your own hometown. I had to get much farther away from, from that. I couldn't do it in a book, and I didn't have the patience at the time to do that. I had to get out, and I've always been more physically mobile anyway, I'd rather be Running around and and uh, you know and being the uh, having a, a studious side came later in my life. It was uh, I had opportunity. I had somebody that had was like, oh, I'm going to live in Colorado. You want to go? I'm like, yeah, sure, let's go. So I left school and went. And it, you know, it's a beautiful place. I don't know if you've ever been there. It's, I haven't. Been. Oh, Colorado's awesome. Yeah, it's a great place. But uh, you know, it was it was the distance that mattered. Mm -hmm. It was the distance from the I, the suffocation that I felt like I was going through, mm -hmm. you know. So the distance was at, the distance and the location was appealing to me. I think it was. Uh, I, I didn't. I've never. I've never had too much uh, trouble for my parents. They, they haven't given me too much trouble over the, over the course of time. Um, I think it was just my own actions. I think I just got sick of my own actions. Okay. I got sick of. And I'm not saying that. It, Things changed there either, right away. But uh, uh, it was a process of, of uh, you know, doing things on my own, and not uh, not dealing with uh, the dictation that I felt was coming my way. At least I was doing my own thing. I ran out of money, <laughs> so I I, I came back uh, home uh, to uh, Schenectady. Uh, and uh, I would say that uh, you know, the, you know, the beginning of the you know, spiritual journey happened. Um, I was basically just fed up with uh, you know, feeling like I hadn't uh, done anything, and uh, you know, I, was, I wasn't sure exactly uh, what I wanted or what I wanted out of it, um, and, I, and I hadn't decided on any one religion yet. Um, before I um, went to uh, uh, Islam, before I read the Quran, I had started 
studying ancient Egypt. Ancient Egypt, yeah. I was uh, studying hieroglyphs um, and uh, that whole language system, which was uh, interesting, quite interesting, actually. I do graphic art, so I was studying their uh, geometric uh, principles because uh, they were quite good at it. And uh, you know, I was I was interested in their their wall uh, diagrams um, because they were so uh, precise and uh, specific. I was studying that that aspect of it, and at the same time studying uh, ancient uh, the hieroglyphs and, and how they constructed them and what they actually meant. And uh, not that we were I wasn't uh, uh, worshiping them or anything like this. I was just studying the, the principles behind them. Um, it's a quite an ingenious uh, language system. But, uh, and then from there, I, I decided to, um, I saw a lot of uh, Christian and archetypes. Um, they have a lot of interesting uh, deities there that symbolize or, or, or resemble uh, Christian concepts. So then I had this uh, crazy idea that, that uh, uh, you know, some of those principles had carried over uh, to Catholicism. And I was more, more thinking about it as a, a system of, of thought. Um, there was nothing to, uh, uh, you know, take me, take me over or to, uh, to give me uh, daily solace. It was, it, was, it was just the work that was the solace. Um, and I felt a lot of, uh, uh, you know, Gratitude for that, you know, because to to organize yourself to to, to really sit down and uh, uh, to work on something that over a long period of time uh, I hadn't done before, you know, I've done you know art projects in high school and whatnot, but this was more serious and I was really developing you know, something that I was enjoying and and uh, you know that that would have been uh, the beginning, but I would say I didn't have it before. I, I knew, I knew what I wa I knew what I wanted. I just didn't know how to articulate it. I didn't know what it looked like. You know, so I went back into Catholicism and uh, and uh, investigated that and and practiced it for some time. Um, but some of the con the concepts I, I just I was never I was never into completely. You know, um, you know, we're talking years, years, and and not. You know, just showing up on Sunday, you know, doing daily research and Amazing. amassing library and and uh, and study and study. <laughs> sure, yeah, because if you could study, I mean, it's no wonder that there's so many, uh, you know, Christians or Catholics that are that will never come out of it, and they will never come out of it because they don't have they don't have uh, a reason to. They can't rationalize their way out of it because there's so many different mysteries. There's so many different things. There's so you can research saints, you can research, you know, martyrs, you can research the the Trinity and try to wrap your brain around that and and waste 15 years of your life, you know. Or you can just blindly follow the Pope and do all that. You know, you can pick any segment you want to and uh, and follow it, and you can still do good works and and you can still uh, do good things and feel good about yourself. Um, but really, when it came down to uh, uh, the introduction uh, with the Quran, there was no comparison whatsoever. I had good friends. Um, you know, d during this this period of my life, I had uh, two really great friends that uh, we were researching uh, together. So we were we were doing the uh, group uh, mentality and really bouncing a lot of ideas off of each other, and and so a lot of things were not left to. You know, like say I would come up with uh, something or interesting meditation, and uh, uh, you know it would be put to, put at the grill, you know, put on the fire and, and really, really tested to see if it's true. Because if it's truthful, then it can't be corrupted, it can't be destroyed, and it can't be tarnished. You know, it's an alchemical pro uh, process. You, you can't tarnish it. That's why gold is so valuable. Gold is valuable because it doesn't corrode. It's worth money to us because you can't corrupt it. It doesn't rust. You put it in as you put it, you can dissolve it and bring it back. It never goes away. And that's why it's valuable. 
So uh, uh, we put that concept to the test, knowledge to the test. You know, you have to test knowledge. You can't just take it and say it is what it is because this person said so. You have to really investigate it and and uh, try to burn it up. And if it burns up, then it's not true. Yeah, it was uh, by chance, really, the, you know, uh, my buddy Stan. Uh, we had been we had been doing uh, Catholic studies, and you know, when I say Catholic study, we were studying all these different saints, and you're studying all these mysteries and esoteric books that you wouldn't believe that were so convincing that you, you know, you could read five times, six times, seven times. But uh, you know, so one day he's like, it was pretty kind of funny story because he. He had got the Book of Mormon. He was he wanted to, he decided he decided he wanted to read all these different religious texts. So he uh, so the next book was the Book of Mormon, which is a totally. Uh, I was a Mormon. You were a Mormon. For about six months, yeah. Six months. Yeah. Oh. So I know what you're talking about. Yeah, John Smith, huh? Yeah. So anyway, so he was going to read that, but he never actually read it. Instead, he got the Quran. So he was reading that. So. I wasn't reading it at that time. He was reading it, and he, so he's reading this, this, uh, this great book, and he's getting very agitated. <laughs> and on a daily basis, he's getting very agitated, agitated, agitated. And he comes to us and say these things, you know, tell us, start talking about it, and be like, be like, listen, calm, calm down, relax. And and he was really agitated. He's like, listen, you got to read it. He says, you got to read the book. I'm sorry, you got to read it. So after a week or two, I decided to sit, sit down and read it, and. Uh, I, I've never, like I said before, I've never sat down and read a book that fast. It was exceptional. You know, I, of all the religious texts that I read, I never read a book that was written in the first person. Uh, it was, it was not speaking about something. It was not historical. It was not a historical document in the classic sense. It was uh, not written by uh, normal means. And that, that's apparent right off the bat. And, and when you have this book speaking directly to you, that's what it feels like. Um, it's quite a, a different effect. And it's not like reading any other book. But I've, I've read enough sure. to know that it's not, it's not a, a book written by a human being. <laughs> sure. yeah. It's the ultimate rational explanation for our existence. It, it, there, there is no doubt. There's no shame when it talks. There's no shame when it speaks to you. It's not afraid of anything. It's, it, um, like I said, it's, it's, it, was, it was so different. It had such a profound effect on my reading it that uh, my life was, you know, started changing pretty immediately. It, if, if I wanted it to or not. It, it didn't matter. If, even if I resisted it, it would still change it. It would still deconstruct it because I was already hearing it. Mm. Some people read it, I think, and then... If they're not open, their hearts are sealed already. They don't he want to hear it. They read it for the wrong reasons. Yeah. You know, for whatever reason at the time, I'm not always open to it. Whether you div uh, orient, or orient yourself, orientate yourself to the divine will or he does it for you, is maybe they happen together. I don't know. But, um, you know, it, it's not... If your heart's open to it and you're really hearing what they're saying, then, then changing your life really... And not or not changing your life doesn't make any sense. Sure. You know, so it, does, it makes more sense to, to make those changes, even, even if they're hard, mm -hmm. even if they take you out of your comfort zone, or you know, you know, it's it's going to happen. Good advice would be to to be truthful and to follow that which is truthful. Well, I, I after I would probably was only a month after I read it that uh, I decided to uh, go to mosque. Um, I went to a uh, Wahhabi Mosque, uh, through the guidance of somebody else, but that's where I went first, and I converted at a Wahhabi Mosque. Um, it was quite intimidating, to be honest with you. Really? And yeah, uh, you know, it wasn't it, w it wasn't my cup of tea from the beginning. Um, so after I did that, I never actually went back uh, there. I did m some more study on my own, and uh, you know, I, I disagreed with with some some issues. Uh, the way that they uh, viewed, um, you know, the Prophet peace be upon him and, and uh, the rest of his family, and I didn't believe that a perfect God would give his message to uh, imperfect beings. It didn't sit right with me, and I and I just figured it had already been done, you know, it had already been done uh, in Christianity. 
giving compan the, the companions to Christ being, not his family, being apostles around him and, and then having uh, the entire religion uh, hijacked, in my opinion, mm -hmm. uh, by St. Paul. Um, later on, like 100 years later. <laughs> yeah. um, so that had already been done. It had already been tried and already been failed. You know, it made much more sense to me to, to leave it with your family. Sure. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah it, it was definitely a, a joint venture to, to quickly go through all, uh, yep, to quickly go through all the, uh, um, the texts. You know, it's a lot of information to digest. And it's, it's not, you know, I'm not going to uh, say that it was all just reading and, and pure, pure knowledge. It's not that way. I, I found, I, the first time I went to a, the Shia mosque, I, it was much lighter. Mm -hmm. I found it much more inviting. You know, it was just, uh, so it felt more natural to me. I, I've been Shia for almost two years. It's been wonderful. It's been wonderful. Uh, it's been enlightening, you know. It's been stressful too, you know. Go through a lot of uh, pains, you know, with your in inside and, and, you know, uh, you know, taking thing cues from your old life and, you know, getting rid of them, shedding them, you know, making lifestyle changes. This is all very difficult, you know, but worth it. شريك لك لبيك لا شريك لك لبيك إن الحمد إن الحمد والنعمة والنعمة لك والملك لك والملك لا شريك لك لبيك اللهم لبيك لبيك اللهم